What's up, everybody? Hi, guys. I'm Ben. And I'm Rainy. And we are the Journals of Awakening. We are here with a cool subject. Go ahead, tell them what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what makes a person a piece of shit. Toxicity, baby. <laughs> Toxicity. Let's talk about it. And that could mean any person, you know, a spouse, a friend, a mom, a dad, anyone. A mom and dad, yep. We'll, we'll start with mom things? and dad. <laughs> what did you say? Other words? <laughs> start with the mom and dad, I suppose. No, come here. No, leave the cat alone. Okay. Leave the cat alone. <laughs> All right, so that was toxic. I just shut her I down. I know, come here. That right there was toxic behavior, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so when we're born, for example. Let's lay down a little bit of a break. Um, well, they say, <laughs> they say a person should have a kid, specifically. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. A kid specifically should have at least one person who is absolutely obsessed with them, and they will be good, right? That's weird. No, because like... Never heard that before. This yeah. is weird. Where's this coming from? Toxic. Just let me get there. Okay. You never let me finish or what? Go ben's ahead. being toxic. Um, anyway, so if you have, if a kid has at least one person that's just obsessed with them, you know, they'll know that there's always at least one person that has their back. For example. Oof. What? No, it's just a... It's triggering. Go ahead. Having, some, having a relative obsessed with the kid is triggering. Go ahead. I think that's just your intrusive OCD. Maybe. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. You have... For, uh, for example, I have Connor, and I just love Connor. Everything about him. Everything he does, I'm so proud of him. I'm like, yes! I encourage him to be his full self. I'm always there. I've always got his back. I will never let anyone beat him up. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, I just love Connor. And Connor knows that that love will never go away no matter what he does. I just love him so much. So when you're... I mean, ideally, you know, it should be a parent who's obsessed with their child. <laughs> but, you know, say you have, like, a cool aunt. And that aunt, you know... She's never going to have kids. So she just loves your kid, you know, and she's always there for the kid. Never had anything like that. That's what I'm saying. Okay. If you grow up and you don't have one adult that is just genuinely, like, there for you, you know, just obsessed with you. They're, they're there. They're supportive. They're listening. They're, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, then you're setting that kid up for failure because it's like once they become an adult, they're, they really think... That they have nobody and that they've never had anybody, right? So, mm -hmm. I guess you just made yourself an example. Okay. You didn't have anybody like that growing up. You were also a middle kid. Yeah. Middle child syndrome. Yeah. Nobody so, cares. when your parents are toxic like that and, you know, they just don't give a fuck. They don't... Your uh, everything you do, your first steps. Well, they already saw one kid take his first steps. How can it be different? Shit yeah. like that. You know, you get left in the mud. And then, you know, that carries on through adulthood. The toxic parent doesn't go away. Okay. Well, what else is toxic so I can get out of this scary-ass place you put me in? Um, friends. Friends are toxic. I can tell you a couple of them that you have. <laughs> <laughs> you specifically. <laughs> I... No, because then it goes to what makes a person toxic. Yes, what makes a person toxic? Pushing drama. No, that's not. That's toxic. See, I don't think that's fair. If you come to me and you say, um, I hate police. I can't believe the police today. You yeah. know what I mean? That's toxic. You're putting me in a rabbit hole. I'm about to go on this tantrum about how much I hate police. Let me tell you about my experiences. It's not toxic. That's just your trigger, and you're responsible Trigger. for your own triggers. I'm triggered. Yes, I was triggered. You know, nobody. So. Yeah, nobody else needs to tiptoe around you. I had a because... trigger moment today in the live, and anybody who's there knows. I had a trigger moment, and then my my true self started pouring out of my everywhere. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I was like, uh, I can't even hold it back anymore. Fuck all of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's how it felt. Uh, and that's and I don't think that is that toxic. No. Because all they're doing is commenting, and you can't control your triggers. Yeah, I know, but am I toxic by being triggered and replying? No, because it's my show, right? It, it would make you toxic if you blame other people for your own triggers. Yeah. No, I, I know. I got my triggers. So let's say my friends. I am a person that likes drama. Not like I'm not going to go... Well, you're, you're a female. 
Okay. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I like conversation. I'll make conversation about anything, and I don't take other people's stuff very seriously, so it's just light conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. And I could have been a therapist if I wanted to, but that requires a lot of schooling. I mean, you don't really care. You're just analyzing. <laughs> Therapy. I, <laughs> um, I care because Toxic. <laughs> I care because I love the person, right? So I, I care about what they're going through. But yeah, I kind of like problem solving solutions. I'm like listening, and I'm like, well, what if you do that and that and that, you know? And that's kind of fun for me. Not everyone listens, so that's okay. I just like to talk, you know. Um, but I just think that I don't keep toxic friends because toxic friends are depressing, you know? And That's so, why I don't really have friends. Let's... I don't deal with other people's drama. I got enough of my own, it feels like, you know? See, but drama doesn't make them toxic. Toxic is, like, belittling you as a person. Like, uh... Well, I mean, I you, know. you don't think it's toxic for, a, say, say uh, a man that's in a bad relationship, his wife beats him every night, right? Yeah. Because, say, he has a drinking issue or something, right? But he ends up getting beat every night by his wife. Is that a toxic relationship? Yeah. Or is she really just trying to help him quit drinking? <laughs> <laughs> trying to better him as a person? Is that toxic? There's gray areas is all I'm saying, my friends. I think that... <laughs> That's not a gray area. I think I that, only beat him because he won't stop drinking. I think that toxic is <laughs> poison, right? So the more you hang out with someone, if you here's a good, if you feel more drained than energized after you feel out with somebody, feel, hang out with somebody, then they are sucking your energy. That's me and that's every time. Toxic. When I go over to my buddy's house. I come home drained. And I don't want to talk to people. I'm done. I pretended to be nice for hours. So Why good. do you feel drained? Do you feel like maybe you're just masking the whole time? Your yes, true self? Absolutely. So I guess that would make you toxic, right? So Yes, because because I know that who I am, yes, mm -hmm. is not acceptable, especially to him, but he's been around forever. So, so this is a good one. Because we're friends. We I don't know how to stop it. I've talked about it before. But people pleasing is one of the most toxic things you can do. You are actively controlling how other people see you. Yeah. It is extremely manipulative. That nobody fake gets smile, to you know. Yeah, nobody gets to decide whether or not they actually like you. Right. So you if you feel like you don't have if you feel like you don't have friends that you can unmask around, then you're gonna go with what you know and keep your mask up. And that is toxic just because you know what you're doing, but it's toxic to yourself, right? That's where split personalities come from. Go on. Okay, I'm like, I don't know if that's true. The but... secret window, guys. <laughs> Think about it. I, the thing I like with all my friends is I don't people please, right? So I stopped kind of doing that because I wanted genuine friends that don't give a fuck about what I do or what I say. Mm -hmm. And then they Well, you just... want them to care. No, I no, they're gonna it's whether or not they like me and my beliefs. I want my friends to be like, fuck yeah, don't give me your ID. That's my friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't check my damn receipt. <laughs> I have one friend like that. But everyone's different too. So I I personally don't feel like I have any toxic friends that are toxic to me. I don't feel you know, sick from hanging out or talking with anybody, you know, it's like... No, no, you're right. But there has been the occasions. The occasions well, where my friends can be where toxic. Where you come to me and you're like, oh, they're being toxic. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah, shut your phone off. Let's just hang out. <laughs> yeah, <that> <laughs> and I, uh... But that's toxic to me. And obviously in order to kind of stop that from happening, I should speak up. But it also tends to only happen when... They're going through something, so yeah. I just like let it go. Respond yeah, you like that pillow you scream into. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. that's probably toxic, but I think that you're that wall I beat to death. There we go. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, I think that males have a harder time just finding friends in general, so I can't imagine how hard it is to unmask around you know people that have an expectation, you know. Well, ego is so huge. It's like, 
it's just starting to die off with the, yeah. new, with the new generations of kids it's starting to die off ego but it's still really huge so men just expect men to be men yeah okay <laughs> for example so you can't be like bro when you watch that daniel tiger did you cry a little bit too I, yeah exactly so i cried a little bit <laughs> it's a good example my best friend's boyfriend i've never met him but from what i understand is that he's a trump supporter now the one that starts with a k yeah every kiss begins with k <laughs> so anyway um <laughs> they I, all start with k oh my god i just figured this out yeah well they all start <laughs> with, they all start with k yeah so anyway go on okay um somebody out there named <laughs> natithany is like really upset at you right now she's like ah oh, that's not my name anyway anyway no, I'm not me. saying that he's toxic by any means, but he's definitely ma toxic masculinity, right? Well, because, you know... The word Trump supporter? Exactly. <laughs> That's a strong phrase. You get it, right? <laughs> yeah. My brother's a Trump supporter. Yeah. And that's the he thing. drives a big truck. <laughs> there you go. That leads into a good subject. Your yeah. brother is super toxic. Oh, yeah. Huge, yeah. Super toxic. And last time I talked to you, bro, it's been years, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he called me a bitch, and that was like a year ago, so, I mean, it carries over. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, like food stamps, dude. Yeah. It doesn't go away. Apologize. Um, <laughs> right. But, yeah, imagine you trying to be friends with him and being your authentic self that you are now. Oof. It wouldn't happen, you no, know? No, he'd disown me. Yeah, exactly, just because of his own... I, if my brother saw me, he'd be like, you're ugly, you're gay... You dress like a homo. Like, that's my brother. <laughs> yeah, and that's... And it's just amazing that, you know, that's not you. Like, you used to believe, like, your brother. Yeah. Right, have that toxic... Oh, well, yeah, we have the same parents. But now, yeah. I also think... I don't think it's necessarily because you're a man. I mean, I do. And that makes it hard to find, like, other men that have your age... That have kind of unmasked themselves and really love people. <gasps> but I also think that, um, I mean, you're kind of a hermit. True. Yeah, so you don't really even have an opportunity to get out. <laughs> but all these people on YouTube, they like you. 650, six of them bitches. And you're definitely yourself <laughs> on YouTube. Way. I am. Yeah. I am 100% authentic. Exactly. Yeah. And I might hide some of my anarchy feelings, but I'm authentic. <laughs> I'd say there's probably one person that you could hang out in real life that really would know you based on YouTube. It, but that's the problem with internet people. Oh, they're yeah, so because they're across away. the damn planet. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're talking about you in Bangladesh. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> that guy in Bangladesh can get out of here. <laughs> no, no, we want him to come back. Oh, come back. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your son with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that toxicity is such a broad term. I can be a very toxic person. Didn't Red Hot Chili Peppers do that song? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out to Chad Smith. No, that's System of a Down. Red Hot Chili Peppers? What? Yeah, Toxicity. Oh, that's my bad. Still like shout Chad out Smith. Chad Smith. Because that's the drummer of Red Hot Chili Peppers. Are you sure? Yeah. Not I only Chad know Smith that. Podcast? No, because Chad Smith Podcast told me about this. That's the only reason I know. Oh. I only know you, Chad. <laughs> but I can be toxic because I have a lot of self-critical issues. And, uh, you know. Self-criticizing? Yeah. Okay. I'm very self-critical. And so if there's a person that I'm friends with, that is definitely better than me in a lot of different ways. In the ways that I want to be better. Right. Better is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, exactly. Right. So right. if they're better at the things that I want to be better at, then I just obviously decide that I don't like them anymore. <laughs> and it's not like on purpose. It's just because I realize that, you know, you can't be mad at someone for being, for naturally having the qualities you wish you had. Right. You know, and I don't... Envy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. and that it's uh, that's super toxic. The great Squirt Gun Kelly, he has it on his arm right there. What envy? Yeah. Really? And red. Yeah, I like see, it. I and like it I just lot. uh, I can definitely be envious, and the reason why they call it a seven deadly sin 
you know, if you take out the religion part of it. Envy is that one of, so in, Catholic, seven in Catholicism, sin. there's seven deadly sins. Ooh. If you take out... Or you get hit by lightning if you do Definitely. It? If you take <laughs> out the religious part of it, those seven things are things that will destroy your self-being, you know? And that's why there's truth in every religion, because... Then it's you wake been, up. It's been twisted, <laughs> and if... Okay, so envy's one of them, because if you're envious, you're going to destroy yourself. Yeah. You know, that's deadly. You know? or, or it's goals. But no, envy is you want something someone else has so bad that you're like you don't like that person because of it, you know? Oh, it's just like Okay. Yeah, no, that's not cool. Gluttony is another one. Right. Being That'd be like hating Jim Carrey for wanting to be Jim Carrey. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, oh you know he has like my dream. Means? Who? Gluttony. No. Well that's another one. <laughs> that's like Making sure. Overeating, basically, but not just... Overeating's easier to say. No, no, because it's not <laughs> just eating. It's over, etc. You know, uh, so if, like... Okay. Yeah, you know... Your cup over over. Indulging, yeah. And that can be self-harming, you know? It's not, you know, if you overindulge in anything, it's going to hurt you. Talking about toxicity still right yes okay <laughs> so like those seven deadly sins mm -hmm. are like all the ways you can destroy your inner being by being toxic to yourself okay and i think that it's guidelines yeah kind of that's what i've always said take religion use it as a guideline every it's not religion, gonna make you a bad because person every religion unless you get obsessed man yeah every religion has truth inside of it yeah exactly you know exactly, every yeah. every one of them they can't get you to drink the kool-aid unless there's a little bit of facts you know what i mean yeah exactly <laughs> you gotta be some facts <laughs> so i mean studying religion in itself can teach you how to wake up and be totally as long yeah. as you no, it's distance yourself from the trigger of it's a learning, god learning you know experience. if yeah. you don't i was baptized uh, you know i went through the whole motion you know went to youth group every week you know church every sunday and yet you didn't know there was no room at the end there was no what room at the end what's that mean yeah exactly what's a room at the end at room at the inn like a hotel like heaven or hell no never mind okay other people will get it explain it to him Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's, uh -huh. I, <laughs> oh, I get it now. Thanks guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about the motel, right? The inn? Stop. <laughs> no, we're not? Stop. Really? I'm, now, see, tell me again. Oh my. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Chop feels. Word. Anyway. Uh, I think that it's. Anything can be toxic if there's too much of it, right? Yeah. Like, an overbearing parent can be toxic. Yeah. Helicopter parent. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That that can be toxic. That can be toxic. Because you're really only helicoptering for your own feelings, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because, for example, you know, Connor's this, time, this mm -hmm. tall, and he's like, Dad, watch. And you're like, no, 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 no. But his teacher's back there saying he wants to show you a Spider-Man jump. So I'm like... He's done it a couple times, you know? I'm like, I don't care. He's not getting hurt on my watch. Yeah, but really, he probably wouldn't get hurt. He definitely wouldn't get hurt. He got he got hurt. He said, ow, my palm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, see, shouldn't have jumped. But a lot of stuff like that when it comes to helicopters, preventing yourself from having to feel yeah. these things. Because I know it's going to freak me out if his wrist goes, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> yeah. I synced it. I watched my brother broke break both his wrists and he's fine and there was no cell phones in those days we had to find a rich man walking a dog in the park who had a cell phone swear to our God. child True. broke his leg and we didn't know it until like hours later hours, so yeah. it's like you okay buddy it, yeah you can be watching them <laughs> and yeah. something can happen he's not even, walking exactly so it, i mean he was like 15 months so <laughs> yeah he wasn't really talking either you know <laughs> but, I mean, he was but he talking. wasn't crying he cried it he cried for about 20 minutes, but he was breastfeeding, so he sniffled into my boob. And, and then he forgot his leg was hurt. And then. But he wouldn't move it. But he wouldn't move yeah, it. Yeah, like, so oh, it was crap. just, it was weird. And I, at 11.30 11, at 11 p.m. in the middle of the pandemic, I called the hospital, and she's like, was he crying for more than 10 minutes? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess. She's like, yeah, you should probably bring him in. <laughs> and his leg was broken. That was the but, same year he got eaten by ants. He sat in an anthill in a diaper. And it's also, yeah, the same year as he got into the shower. It was the scariest shit you know? ever. I got bit a hundred times. He must have been bit two hundred times. This is scary as hell. Lead poisoning too from working at the mine. Good for me, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Brought lead poisoning home to my baby. Yeah. 
so exactly right so there's all these things that can happen it's a good thing i was making all that money <laughs> there's all these things that can happen that you don't even know are happening or are gonna happen and i had no control yeah like i was just going to work you so know? you know you control these things that really they're probably fine you know but you've been getting better obviously you let them play outside now and yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm healing but Anything can be toxic. I could definitely be toxic because sometimes I'm too, uh, like I let him walk all over me. But he's four. Someone's got to teach him boundaries, you know? So really, I'm just teaching him, like, <laughs> not. I beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I use a stern voice. <laughs> but I hate when people are like, Red flag this, red flag that, toxic this, because everyone's toxic. Everyone. My wife is a toxic. Oh! <laughs> everyone can be, <laughs> everyone can be toxic. It, it really doesn't matter what you do or what you say. You're going to do something toxic because we're human. What you going to do? There's what just do? certain toxicities that you decide you want to put up with. You know, if yeah. you are. That's. What? Go ahead. I was just going to say, that's my theory, is, is is in life, if you want a partner, you literally just have to find someone that can put up with your bullshit. Everyone or has bullshit. that you want to put up with their bullshit. That you can put up with their bullshit. Yeah. yeah. If you can handle, because everybody's got bullshit. If you yeah. can handle their bullshit, you could. I hate when they're like the perfect life partner, because no. everyone's got <laughs> shit. I drink out of the jug, okay? My shit hits the back of the toilet. It's, it's, it's I got to clean it all the time. You know what I mean? And those are the little things. <laughs> <laughs> I fart under the blankets. <laughs> I just think that... I'm it, fucking perfect, okay? <laughs> I, I stopped deciding that I was going to cut people off for being toxic unless they genuinely were constantly toxic over and over Same. again. Same. I get toxic people in my chat and I don't... You know, like, people are like, oh, you need a moderator. I'm like, no, 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 let him go. Let him, let, yeah. let him say his bit. I want to hear it, you exactly. know? Exactly. Like, Everyone's got something to say, and everyone acts a certain All way. energy is welcome. Yeah, you just decide if that energy's for you. And Unless it's straight up hate, and then it's, no. Exactly. But then <laughs> if you, that's the thing, then you distance yourself. Even if you feel start feeling, like, hateful towards someone, distance yeah. your own self, you know? Right. Just be like, all right, not reading your comments anymore. I'm yeah, on, and you know? <laughs> if someone's meant to be in your life, eventually they're going to come back around. But us humans, we think that that eventually has to happen in, like, six months. But really, you know, two years down the road and this person makes a reappearance, everything else can fall into place. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be on a timeline. Everyone's got I haven't shit. seen the best man in, like, fucking ten years. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, exactly. Maybe more, so... Yeah, but if I saw him, it'd be cool. It'd be like, what's up, dude? Yeah, exactly. I've seen you since we were little. But it's family, <laughs> too, right? Imagine your yeah. sister decides to enroll her child in the Montessori school in a couple years. And, like, all of a sudden, yep, we're going to see each other every day. It'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. It'll be like, you trying to smoke after you drop them off? <laughs> Everything... Everything falls together or falls apart, but if you're supposed everything falls to, into place. Yes, thank you. <laughs> where it goes, where it's supposed to, but yeah. there's no timeline. And thinking that there's a timeline or forcing a timeline is Pushing toxic. Pushing things, toxic. Yep. Let shit happen. Especially if you miss someone, but it's not the right time, and you know the signs to the universe haven't told you it's the right time to reach out or etc. Mm -hmm. Then you're making it toxic. If it's not the right time, it's not the right time. You know. And that's just, uh, Thanks. other people can't handle that, though. Other people are like, it has to be now or you hate me forever. Well, you got to think about number one, you got to be a little selfish because nobody else is. Exactly. Nobody else is putting you first. No one. Except for you. Except for you. Yeah. And, and that goes for us, too, uh, right? Okay. We yeah. love each other to death, but I have to take care of my shit. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not I mean, like any you relationship, know? we go through waves. Right. So it's important to go through those waves. Like right now, we're enjoying our separation time. Like, yeah. You know, you do your own thing. I and spend I, a lot of time in my studio. But it's important. We've and, never known how to give each other space. And she's doing art and reading. And yeah, and it's been nice, right? It's been We've really had nice. Tons yeah. of space. Like, yeah, I've been able to knock shorts out, get my shit done. I'm not like at the end of the night going, oh, I wish I had more time today. Nope. I have plenty no, yeah. of time to take care of my shit. Like and then last I come night, back. I texted him and I said, I love you. He's she like, you're going to bed? And I she said, She emailed me from the bedroom. <laughs> you're laughing, but most people text their spouses across the room. She emailed me. Do you most people do that? Do most people email their spouses it's from across chat. the house? It's anyway, an email. 
It's a Gmail. Anyway, <laughs> and I said, uh, I love you. And he said, are you going to bed? And I said, well, not necessarily, but the blankets are warm. And I don't want to get yeah. out. So. But before, say six months ago, I would have oh. felt a lot of pressure I to get up. I just kept the best part of that story. Why? She said, the blankets are warm. I don't want to get up. But I really want to listen to some ASMR. Ask her. And I said, here I come with your headphones. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, was really uh, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Give me, give me but six up. months ago, <laughs> there would have been a lot of, a lot of like anguish to feel forced to hang out. And... Yeah. And that's the thing. You feel forced. Yeah. Like it feels like, oh, I'm not trying in my relationship. My relationship's failing. No. I think that <laughs> things are going really good right now, yeah. like in life in general. And we have really good days. To where when it's nighttime, I know that I am an absolute bitch at night. I mean, I just... She is a bitch at night. I just... if The second I start getting tired, I don't give a shit about anybody else. <laughs> I am tired. I want to be alone. So, yeah. I think that works for us. Can you shut the door, but not all the way, but shut the door? Yeah. Precisely. <laughs> Can you wear headphones or something? And in the morning... <laughs> Ben is an absolute bitch in the morning. I am a little bitch in the morning. Y'all know. See me every morning. <laughs> Whatever. You put on such a show for like the first 10 minutes and then you wake up. But no, when Ben wakes up, it's like, ah, leave me alone. Ah, turn the sun off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so everyone's toxic. Not a morning person. But yeah. Sorry, I saw the sticker. And on that note. We thank you. Peace.